Hi there. My name is I am an art talking teddy bear. I'm here to make you happy. First off, I'm new here, so a bit of background. My name is Chris, and I love indie games, my fiance, and cricket. Probably not in that order, but that's not important right now. What is important is that you are watching Invicta Gaming, and this is Zarm. Zarm is a first-person horror game developed by Alan Zubina, whose previous Steam releases are It's Always Monday and the seemingly intriguingly titled Schrodinger's Cat Simulator PT, the latter being a playable teaser for our game of focus today. Released on the 13th of August 2020 and costing £8, Zarm sells itself as a psychological thriller horror game and confidently declares that it is for fans of Soma, Gone Home and Layers of Fear. Strong words, particularly as two of those games, Soma and Gone Home, are in my favourite game lists. Does it live up to these claims? In short, no. In long? You open in a dark space with the titular Zarm machine in front of you. The first thing I noticed is that the graphics had a similar feel to Cyanide Studios' Call of Cthulhu, that slightly greasy sheen to every surface, or maybe that's just me. This isn't strictly a bad thing, but it does tend to mean that the bloom is off the scale, but it also adds a slightly dark feel which suits this style of game. You then find yourself in your car and discover that you are David Hubbard, inventor of the Mercurial Zarm machine and owner of the creepiest driver's license in the known universe. And you are looking for Lucy, your daughter, who has gone missing. Some weird stuff happens. Then you get into the game proper. Fundamentally, this is a game about loss and the unsettling relationship between father and daughter. Or at least, that's what it says on the Steam page. In truth, this is neither an emotional experience, a la Gone Home, or a nerve-jangling, pulse-pounding horror game, like Soma. It's a puzzle game, and a pretty bog-standard one at that. Imagine Myst had a love child with HP Lovecraft, and got a lot more simple. The central hub, if you will, of your journey is a fishing boat, on which you can find several linear puzzles, all with relatively simple, if mercilessly logical, solutions, the Zarm machine, 14 notes of varying interest and relevance, and a seemingly innumerable number of miscellaneous items which are fully interactable, but mostly useless. Despite the tone of this review so far, this environment is quite interesting to explore and is remarkably well fleshed out considering the location itself doesn't add that much to the progression of the story. The notes you find do give further insight into the story, however, but I have to be honest and say that I wasn't invested in the plot. It's not a bad story, and it deals with some very heavy and emotional subject matter in a concise and respectful manner, but it just didn't grab me. It's well researched and has plenty of depth, but it's poorly told, and that is what let this game down. Honestly, I don't think the developers knew precisely what kind of game they wanted to produce a horror game or a puzzler, a walking simulator or an action-packed blockbuster. So what we ended up with was a kind of mish-mash middle-of-the-road version of all of them. I can't help but shake the feeling that rather than each puzzle linking the plot points together, they actually more just unlock the next slightly odd cutscene. The intent, I believe, was to show a tormented soul struggling to come to terms with a truly tragic event, but it just didn't work, and while I wasn't bored, I wasn't excited either. The ideas are good, the implementation is poor. There's an awful lot of arbitrary guff that you have to go through before you get to the story, which is a shame because this game could have been so much more. The story, if told properly, could be genuinely emotional and really tug at the heartstrings. There is an element of choice in this game. Without giving too many spoilers, there are at least three different endings, and each of them has their own bittersweet payoff, for want of a better phrase. With a more concise direction and a bit of polish, it could have been an emotional roller coaster. But the easy puzzles, abstract for abstract sakes, feel, and lack of focus make this game a classic example of meh. It's mechanically sound, but it lacks that bit of soul that makes it feel alive. It's the video game equivalent of a blow up doll. I'd give it 4 out of 10. It's an hour you won't get back, but you probably won't miss that hour too much either. 
If you've played the game, please let us know what you thought of it in the comments. If you enjoyed the review, give it a like and a share, and don't forget to subscribe to keep yourself awash with new content from Invicta Gaming. Thank you for watching.